let's talk about equipotential planes. Um, and really, first off, we ought to break down the word equipotential. And uh, it's kind of nice that, that it is actually a word, um, unlike ampacity or overcurrent. Uh, it is something that's actually a word. Uh, you look it up in the dictionary and you'll, and you'll find it. Uh, equal potential, right? So uh, two different potentials that are equal. And really what we're talking about here is voltage. You know, if you, if you define voltage, it's the difference in potential between two objects. So equal potential plane is when we're trying to establish the same voltage on a plane. So let's look at the definition. It's accessible, conductive parts, that are bonded to each other to reduce voltage gradients. Now, they added the term accessible uh, in the definition here, which, uh, which I think was a mistake, quite frankly. Um, you know, is concrete conductive? Well, we don't really consider concrete uh, a conductor. You know, you, you wouldn't use it intentionally to, to conduct electricity. However, uh, if you're standing barefoot on concrete that's, that's contacting earth and you touch a live wire, yeah, you're going to get shocked. So it, it does conduct electricity. So you could argue that maybe the word accessible makes sense. Accessible conductive parts that are bonded to each other to reduce voltage gradients. So looking at the picture here, uh, this is some medium voltage stuff where they have bonded the support structure to this section of concrete. And if you're standing on the concrete and you touch the metal parts, then hopefully it's the same voltage between those two. Now, really what we're probably bonding is the rebar inside of the concrete, which then makes the entire concrete all the same voltage, or at least very close to the same voltage. So whether or not we can get the exact same voltage throughout the big piece of concrete, we could debate that. But it will reduce voltage gradients. So if you were to take your, your multimeter, right, and you've got two test leads, and you've got maybe six feet, if you were to walk on the concrete, touch it down, and then, you know, touch it over here, and touch it over here, and touch it over here, you should have the same voltage if you have rebar in there, and the rebar is all tied together and bonded. Uh, if you were to make your test lead significantly longer, uh, maybe touching it at one end, and then throwing it down and touching it 100 feet away, maybe you wouldn't get the same voltage. Uh, but you'd get close, and the, the voltage drop there we would call a, a voltage gradient. So we're trying to reduce that. We're trying to make it so everything that I can touch is the same voltage. Now, where would you find an equipotential plane? Well, the NEC uses that in two different code articles. Number one, it uses it in Article 682, which is artificial and natural bodies of water. So uh, areas that, that don't really fall under the scope and the purview of Article 555 for marinas, box, and, uh, boat yards, and docks, and also it doesn't quite fall under the, the criteria of a swimming pool. So you'll see it there. You'll also see it in Article 547, which is agricultural buildings. So for agricultural buildings, especially in the dairy industry, this is a really important concept. Um, if you have a couple of different volts, right? A, a couple of different volts. A couple of volts <laughs> uh, worth of difference between your feet and your hands. For a human, like two or three volts is, is maybe perceptible, maybe, probably not even perceptible. For a cow, it's a different story. If a cow's back hooves and front hooves are touching zero volts and three volts, uh, they will feel that. And what will sometimes happen is they will stop producing milk. They'll develop what's called mastitis and, uh, and they won't produce milk. And mastitis is actually like the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest cause of financial ruin of a lot of dairy farmers. When your cows get mastitis and they stop producing, it, it, it's a big deal. Now, look, I live in a city. I don't live on a farm. I don't know anything about farming, uh, so I can only go with what I've read. But mastitis, uh, I know that is a thing. I know that it can happen because of voltage. But, you know, what ultimately happens to the cow, I, I, I don't know. So we need to make sure that cows aren't getting differences of potential when they walk around inside of a building in the barn or when they're going where this really happens is when they're going from outside of the barn to inside of the barn. So what you'll find in Article 547 
is a requirement that you have to put rebar throughout your slab in your barn, your concrete slab, and you're going to tie all of that rebar together just with your typical tie wires, and then you're going to bond it to the service equipment, to the panel boards, things like that. And what that does is it ensures that everywhere that the cow is walking is the same voltage. And in fact, in some dairy farms, what they'll do is they'll actually create an equipotential ramp where the, where the cows walk into the barn. And what you'll do is you'll take a piece of rebar and you'll extend it out of the side of the slab and then bend it down at like a 45 degree angle and run it down underground into the dirt. And what happens is, let's say the concrete inside the farm is all three volts relative to remote earth. So in other words, if I have a uh, hundred foot long test leads and I take one test lead and I, and I bury it in the dirt a hundred yards or a hundred miles or whatever, remote earth. And I take the other test lead and I touch it to the concrete. Let's say I have three volts. That's fine. That's not a problem unless you're a cow. So how do I deal with that? Well, you can't remove voltage, but what you can do is you can kind of hide it. You can, you can make the differences in voltage more gradual. So if you were to keep your one test lead on the concrete and then go out, unbury your test lead and put it in the dirt right where the cows would enter the barn, if you have a little bit of voltage there and as you, as you move your test leads farther and farther apart, that voltage is going to get greater until it hits about three volts or so. So what you want to do is take that piece of rebar, bury it into the side of your slab, bend it down at an angle, and then as the cows start approaching the floor, the difference in voltage diminishes by like a half of a volt with every step they take because a cow can deal with one half of one volt. What they can't deal with is three volts or five volts or whatever. So if we make that little gradual plane, then as they walk, the difference between their front hooves and their back hooves are, are not going to be as dramatic as three volts or five volts or whatever voltage it is that can cause damage and, and sickness to the cows. So the concept here, equal potential plane, really simple. It, it's exactly what the name says, equal potential, bonding things together to create the same voltage between various conductive objects. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.